Welcome to Badminton Unlimited, your weekly access to badminton and beyond. This week we spend the afternoon with India's number one men's tandem Manu Atri and Sumit Reddy as they aim to break into the elite of the sport. And we hang out with Chris and Gabby Adcock as they lend their star power to the Yonex Legends Vision Project. From the iconic Prakash Padukon and All England champion Pulela Gopichan to current stars such as Kidambi Srikanth and Saina Nehwal, Indian badminton has a history of producing world-class shuttlers in the solo discipline. The nation's prowess and success in the singles has led to growth in this category. But there is a downside. The growth of the solo format has led to lack of depth and quality in the doubles. For some time, Juwala Guta and Ashwini Ponapa were the only established pair in women's doubles competing and winning on the international stage. However, recently things are picking up in the doubles camp. We played our first nationals, senior nationals together and uh, I was really surprised that uh, we won our first nationals together and it was really a great victory for both of us and a great motivation as well. And since then, uh, we are like started performing well and well day by day, and uh, we're working more hard, and uh, and it's like a miracle, I think. I mean, we are in top 20 in the world, and it's really a good thing for Indian and Indian doubles as well, and for Indian badminton. Manu Atri and B Sumit Reddy are India's latest hope in men's doubles. Currently ranked 20th in the world rankings, the duo began playing together in 2012. The partnership came about because a troublesome back injury to Sumi forced him to quit the singles format. But out of this misfortune, a new path has been forged. Manu saw an opportunity to use the solo skills of Sumi to help him when he was looking for a new playing partner. I used to partner with Jishnu Sanyal uh, and uh, he started playing with someone else so I had no option. I mean my coach uh, told me like to choose uh, Sumit and one more player. So I just chose Sumit. I just wanted to try with him because he just shifted to doubles. I had a back injury. Before that I used to play uh, singles. I was around 5th uh, or 6th in uh, Indian ranking in singles. So I thought uh, he's a little more experienced than the other guy so that actually worked out. The partnership got off to a good start. In their first competitive outing, the more experienced Manu guided Sumith to victory at the Sri Naga Nationals. They went on to win at the Tata Open India International Challenge, a title they defended the following year. By 2015, the duo broke into the top 20 in the BWF World Rankings. And with the Olympic qualifying period starting that year, the pair's progress came at the right time. They were on the winner's podium in Nigeria and Belgium and also clinched their maiden Grand Prix title in Mexico City. They finished the year in 17th, a career best for the Indian duo. Manu and Sumith were in good shape to qualify for the Summer Games in Rio. It's actually a very lucky year for us because once once the Olympic qualification has started, uh, we never thought we would come so far. So because uh, we were going on our own for all the tournaments. It's like a result of our hard work also. But I think as Sumit said, we are lucky as well because uh, we played so many tournaments on our own and we have won uh, like some of them, we, some of them we have won, and some of them we have lost as well. But uh, it was really a good experience, and uh, and definitely hard work pays off. To secure their passage to Rio, the Indian pair opted to compete at lower level tournaments, and in doing so, had to pay for their own passage, as the association finances players for tournaments at Grand Prix gold level and above. Although these events offer less points. Manu and Sumit felt they had a better chance of reaching the latter stages and winning. All the uh, GP tournaments and the Challenger tournaments are not sponsored, so we had to pay on our own. If we hadn't won 
uh, among the first three tournaments, uh, anyone, then I think we would have not come this far. We would have uh, just thought, okay, now we are just going to go and play the Super Series. You know, the Super Series, we need to compete against all the top guys and we are not seeded. So, uh, we need to play the top five in the world. So, there are pretty less chances of winning those. Instead, uh, we had to go and win the smaller ones, which uh, would make sure we are get qualified for the Olympics. The pair's steady climb also coincided with the arrival of a specialist doubles coach to the Indian national team. Former Malaysia men's doubles head coach Tan Kim He has been instrumental in the progress of Manu and Sumit. He's really intelligent in about the techniques and all. He's uh, uh, more into hard work and he works on our skills also. And uh, he, he has trained all like he has trained uh, so many world top players like Lee Yong Day. Koreans and Malaysians and so many other teams also. So I think he's a very experienced and uh, I hope uh, he'll give India top doubles, doubles players as well. It's all coming together nicely for the duo. With the Olympic qualifying period having ended earlier in the month, the pair has booked a place on the plane to Brazil having finished 12th in the Race to Rio rankings. Now on the verge of appearing on the biggest sporting stage, both players are quick to acknowledge the role their fathers played in pushing them to achieve greatness. His dream is also uh, to make sure I become a good uh, player, but uh, I think he never would have thought that I would make to the Olympics because uh, it was his call that I play badminton uh, and, and uh, I think all the hard work I put in is uh, his. It's my dad's dream. I mean, he wants me to play Olympics. Manu Atri and Sumit Reddy's success has helped to raise the profile of the doubles game in India. With a solid infrastructure now in place, it's hoped more players will be interested in doubles. As Badminton Unlimited wrapped up our chat with India's top duo, we found out what their Olympic dream is. Actually, my aim is to get a medal in Olympics. If we work hard and uh, if we train well, then you never know what gonna, what is going to happen in the tournament. Yeah, you never knew because see, uh, three years down the line, doctors said you can never play badminton. So I'm here, I'm pretty uh, Indian level and uh, also competing at the international level. So I think uh, uh, you never knew. All, all, all you need to do is give your, you give your best and uh, someday, if uh, God's willing, He'll give you what you deserve. Time to test your badminton knowledge. In this week's trivia, we want you to name the first Polish doubles pair to win a World Super Series title. We reveal all after the break. When we return, we review the Total BWF Thomas and Uber Cup Finals 2016 from Kunshan, China. Get in touch with us on social media. Tell us what you think on the latest news or perhaps you just want to leave an encouraging note for your favorite player. If you've got any comments, tweets or photos to share, do get connected with us on these social media platforms. Before the break, we asked you to name the first Polish doubles pair to win a World Super Series title. The answer is Robert Matusiak and Nadiezda Zeba. The mixed doubles pair created history in 2009 by becoming the first ever players from their country to clinch a World Super Series title. In the final at the Yonex Sunrise Hong Kong Open, the duo defeated the Indonesian pairing of Nova Widianto and Liliana Natsia in straight games. It was also the Polish duo's first appearance in a final of a top event. Having secured a place in the upcoming Rio Olympics, Fans will get to see more of Robert Matusiak and Nadia Zazeba in action in Brazil. 
With 21 nations in Kunshan, China for the Total BWF Thomas and Uber Cup Finals 2016, a showcase of top-class badminton took center stage in the Jiangsu province city for the week-long event. The Kunshan Sports Center saw 16 men's and 16 women's teams battle to be crowned the best in two of the biggest tournaments the sport has to offer. The 26th edition of the Uber Cup welcomed three debutantes in the competition, with Bulgaria, Spain and Mauritius participating for the first time. Ratchanok Intanon led Thailand were hoping their depth in singles backed by strong doubles would help them go far. The Thais had the edge in the group stage and were top of Group C, but they came up short against India in the first knockout round. India did well to reach the semi-finals for a second consecutive time in the women's team competition. However, they were no match against the favourites and 13-time holders China as they lost 3-0 to the Chinese. Japan, who were expected to be the main threat to the hosts, went down disappointingly 3-1 in the last four against Korea. So it was China versus Korea in the final of the Uber Cup. In the first singles match, Sung Ji Hyung, Korea's top women's singles shuttler, faced China's Olympic champion Lee Shui Rei. Sung started brightly, constantly firing winners at an out-of-position lead to go a game ahead. But the local favourite was not about to disappoint the home fans. The Chinese ace stormed back to level the scores and finished off Sung in the decider with a depth shot to put China 1-0 up. The second match was a doubles contest between Chao Yun Lei and Tian Xing and Jun Kyung Yun and Shin Song Chan. The Korean pair pulled off a massive upset by beating China's Olympic champions Chao and Tian to keep Korea in the hunt for the crown. In the rubber, Jung and Shin saved three match points and found themselves in a match-winning position of their own. The Korean duo duly converted for a thrilling 16-21, 21-17, 25-23 victory. Kim Hyo Min was up against Wang Shi Xian in the second singles, and the Koreans stood little chance against Wang's pace, power, and range of shots. The Chinese shuttler restored China's advantage with a clinical 21 13, 21 12 demolition of Kim. In the second doubles match, China fielded the young combination of Tang Yuan Ting and Cheng Tsing Chen against Chang Ye Na and Li So He. Tang and Cheng were on the attack from the start and thriving on the home crowd's energy. The young pair never let their opponents in with a shout. Winning the match comfortably 21-14, 21-16, Tang and Cheng sealed the title for China 3-1. As I'm still young, I lack game experience compared to the other players. But I think I performed well today. I only played with Tang once previously, so we are very pleased with our partnership. I'm happy to have helped China clinch the Uber Cup title. We should have won it 3-0, but if that had happened, we wouldn't have gotten the chance to see Tang and Chen in action. Zhao Yunlei and Tian Qing's defeat was a blessing in disguise, as China got to witness a great performance from Tang and Chen in the second doubles match. The Chinese women's team extended China's Uber Cup domination to an incredible 14 titles. The 29th Thomas Cup was nothing short of drama, excitement and roller coaster emotions. Without the strength of Kento Momota and Kenichi Tago in singles, defending champions Japan only went as far as the quarterfinals of the competition. In a tight contest against Denmark, the Japanese men lost out in the deciding third singles match. Hans Christian Vietinghus edged out Riichi Takashita to win it for the Danes 3-2. Shockingly, favourites China also fell at the quarterfinal stage. Korea stunned the host 3-1 and denied the Chinese from reaching a semi-final since their debut in 1981. Last edition's finalist Malaysia crashed out at the semi-final stage. Their challenge at the Thomas Cup ended after a 3-2 defeat to Denmark. Korea, who had so spectacularly eliminated the Chinese, could not find a way past Indonesia in the last four. Indonesia made their first final since 2010 after beating Korea 3-1. So history was in the making for the 29th Thomas Cup final when Indonesia faced Denmark. 
The Red and Whites were going for a record 14th men's team title, while the Danes were aiming to do what none of their predecessors have done in 67 years, lift the Thomas Cup. The first men's singles match saw a keen contest between Victor Axelsen and Tommy Sugiato. The young Dane powered ahead to take the first game, and despite trailing in the second initially, Axelsen managed to score six straight points to clinch the second and hand Denmark a 1-0 lead. Indonesia then leveled the scores 1-1 through Mohamed Arsen and Hendra Setiawan. The world champions showed their class and it was simply one-way traffic as Mads Conrad Peterson and Mads Pila Kolding had no answers to the Indonesian barrage of attacks. In the second singles match, Jano Jorgensen banked on his experience against the young Anthony Ginting. The Danish shuttler covered his ground well and ran away with an easy victory to put Denmark 2-1 up. The doubles rescued Indonesia again. Anga Pratama and Ricky Karanda Suwardi put the 13-time winners back in the contest after beating Kim Astrup and Anders Skarup Rasmussen. The world number 12 duo had far too much firepower. The Indonesian pair bombarded Astrup and Rasmussen with a variety of shots and cruised past the Danish duo 21-16, 21-14 to send the Thomas Cup final to a decider. In the deciding third singles, the experienced Hans Christian Vietinghus battled against youngster Isan Maulana Mustafa and the Danes showed that his years of experience mattered. The Danes stayed calm and was rock solid in his play. Vietinghus sealed the deciding singles 21-15, 21-7 to deliver Denmark's first ever Thomas Cup victory. It's uh, the best feeling uh, I've ever had. Uh... There's no doubt it's the greatest day of my life. Uh... Oh, that's how I feel, eh? Denmark are crowned kings of the world and become only the fifth nation to lift the prestigious men's team trophy. When we come back, we're in England as we report on the Adcock's first event as ambassadors of the Yonex Legends Vision. Visit our YouTube channel, badmintonworld.tv. Their tournament highlights, play of the days, as well as past matches to savor. Missed an episode of Badminton Unlimited? Don't fret. All the episodes are available for your viewing pleasure. All the best badminton clips are just a click away. The BWF World Super Series is a 12 tournament series where the world's best singles and doubles players compete to reach the top eight of the destination Dubai rankings and secure a place in the Dubai World Super Series finals. This week, we take a look at the men's double standings after tournaments in England, India, Malaysia and Singapore. With four different pairs making it to the top of the podium so far, the men's doubles is one of the most competitive disciplines. Victory at the Selcom Asiata Malaysia Open and a quarter-final finish in New Delhi were enough for Korean pair Kim Ki-jung and Kim Sa-rung to lead the rankings. Chai Piao and Hong Wei have not recorded a World Super Series win, but consistent ladder stage finishes sees the Chinese pair rack up the points for second spot. Malaysia's Go V Shem and Tan Wee Kiong are in third after making the semi finals in England and India. The world number ones Li Yong Dae and Yu Yong Xiong lie in fourth. Indonesian duo Anga Pratama and Ricky Karanda Suwardi take up the fifth spot. Singapore Open winners Fu Hai Feng and Chang Nan are in six, and India Open champions Marcus Fernaldi Gideon and Kevin Sanjaya Sukamuljo take seventh place. The Destination Dubai rankings are updated every Thursday after a World Super Series tournament. 
To find out how the players are doing in their race to make the cut for the season-ending tournament in Dubai, log on to bwfbadminton.com or bwfworldsuperseries.com for all the latest information and news. Be it the uptake at the grassroots level or on the elite scene, badminton is a rapidly growing sport. In the last five years, the BWF has widened badminton's global reach. The BWF school's badminton program, Shuttle Time, has successfully introduced the sport to more than 100 nations at the school and community level. In the top flight, tournaments such as the season-ending Dubai World Super Series Finals has played its part in raising the profile of the sport. Stakeholders are also doing their bid to grow the game worldwide and one of them is Yonex. The sports company has signed the brightest stars, past and present, to help inspire the younger generations and raise the profile of badminton worldwide through the Yonex Legends Vision Initiative. Latest to join the cause are England's top mixed pair, Chris and Gabby Adcock. The husband and wife duo were recently chosen by Yonex to be ambassadors to the UK. Yeah, really excited. Um, we can't wait to step on court. I think there's a massive buzz down there at the minute in the hall. So um, yeah, it's our first Legends Vision event and uh, really looking forward to it. Yeah, as Gabby said, yeah, really excited. Um, hopefully lots of kids down there that we hopefully can inspire. Um, and yeah, just yeah, really excited right now. Our cameras were in Milton Keynes, England, recently to find out how the world number seven tandem are doing their bit to spark interest in the sport within the region. I think what the whole Legends vision is about is, in, is improving our sport uh, globally and obviously for us as ambassadors to take that to the UK and local places like here in Northampton. Uh, if we can inspire a few kids to pick up a racket and, and be badminton players at a local club or then nationally or anything really, but um, to just to get hold of the sport, enjoy it with a friend and, and yeah, take, bring the sport forward. To kick things off, the Dubai World Super Series Finals champions tantalise their young spectators with an exhibition showcase. Yeah, I think we'll be having a bit of fun as well, so uh, hopefully try a few trick shots, hopefully we won't get any wrong. Um, just give them a taste of what World Class Badminton is, is about, I mean obviously with Andy and Sarah, it's, it's great. Andy was obviously a former top 10 uh, world badminton player. OK, we're going to go get ready for the match now. We hope everybody has a fantastic evening. With the crowd packing the badminton hall at the Elizabeth Woodville School, the Adcocks were given a hero's welcome before their friendly match. The pair promptly proceeded to the court and dived into the action. It may have just been an exhibition, but Chris and Gabby were determined to display some serious skills. Their young spectators were clearly impressed with what they saw. Yeah, watching Chris and Gabby it was a really good experience, like getting the opportunity to watch them so close up. Uh, watching, and I enjoyed watching them, seeing them so close up and seeing how they play their shots and move around the court. It was a good chance to watch the professionals play, and they were good shots, and. I want to learn how to play like that. But it wasn't all about the stars strutting their stuff for the fans. There were opportunities for budding talent to test their skills and receive valuable advice and pointers from UK's top mixed doubles pair. They want others to be involved as well, so it just like, influences me to do better and just like to get to the level they're playing at. I think tonight was a huge success. I think we've had so much positive feedback um, and then being able to watch the professionals playing in live, um, I, think, um, I think, yeah, we've done a really, really successful evening and hopefully we've inspired a few people and kids, adults, to just pick up a racket and start playing. Thanks to Yonex again for putting it on, but yeah, it went really well, we're really happy with it. There was a lot of smiling kids and adults actually that went out of the building after it was done, so yeah, I really enjoyed it and I think it went well, so hopefully there'll be more to come. With initiatives like the Yonex Legends Vision inspiring youth with their up-close and personal approach, the future of the sport can only get brighter. Before we go, let's find out what's happening on the international circuit in our Badminton Unlimited calendar.
Next week on Badminton Unlimited, we feature the rise of the Mexico national team as they made their first appearance at the Total BWF Thomas and Uber Cup Finals. See you next week.